Hello my friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobelman. In today's video, we're talking about top five reasons why your computer might be running slow. Number one, background processes. Number two, low RAM. Number three, computer updates. Number four, virus or malware attack. Number five, computer overheating. And as a bonus, I will talk about why a video game might be running slow. All right, let's look at number one reason, and that is background processes. So what is a background process? Well, it's self-explanatory. It's a process that runs in the background or a program if you will to make it a little bit easier to understand so you can find these in your task manager if you right click your toolbar in windows select task manager you can see that there are a bunch of background processes running that's because that's the first very first tab here you can see there are a bunch of things running in the background and some are idle with taking up some of the memory or ram i should say and then there are some that are constantly running in the background like so if you see that it's running like this this is pretty normal you know i'd say around five percent of cpu usage max on idle is probably okay for most computers however if you see this go up you know really high that means that a process in the background is taking up your cpu power and every time you try to launch a new application or even just use the computer your computer is going to run really slow let me show you an example of that by the way if you open this up in a windows 10 for the first time, this is how it's going to look like. In order to see everything, you just have to click on more details. But I digress. Let's look at an example of a background process that could cause a lot of CPU usage. So I'm, I have a ImmuNet open, which is antivirus software. So I'm just going to click full scan. The reason I'm using this as a demonstration is because a lot of antivirus softwares, including this one, like to run background scans like this for viruses automatically so they have a set schedule and it would show up kind of like this now it's using up 34 percent of your cpu power and of course they can this can spike up quite a bit even up to 99 percent or even 100 percent of cpu usage now this is you know normal for immune net to do as long as you're aware so you don't necessarily want to kill this um, service which would obviously speed up your computer so if you just go over here and then stop it right if you end task, it's going to stop it. And then of course you can speed up your computer like that. But in this case, you might want to, you know, stop and, and well, you might want to actually stop and wait for it to finish, right? So if I stop scan and then I just close, you can see that it canceled that. And now it's gonna go back down to normal speeds of the immune net. It takes a few seconds here and that's what happens. Sometimes you would see memory usage be super, super high. That could be another reason uh, of a, another uh, example of a background process taking up too much power. And now you can see that immune net is going down slowly here, which is really normal. So if you can't prevent a background service to run, uh, that's probably related because it's scheduled or it's set up to start at a startup. So you, re you reboot your computer or even log out of your computer, log back in, it's going to start up. And that is located in the, a startup menu, which is the fourth over in the task manager. You can see them here. Uh, they're conveniently uh, positioned here. So you can literally look at what they are and you can see which one of those actually start automatically. Here is the immune net. This is the antivirus. It starts automatically. I want that and I'm perfectly okay with that. If I want to disable it, I can disable it down here on the bottom. Simply click disable. Since I don't want to do that with the antivirus, I'm just going to, as an example, I'm going to disable this audio manager and you can see now that it's disabled. Now, keep in mind, there's one more place that a computer or I should say that a program can run on startup and have a background process running like that. And one of those is in this location. This is Program Data Microsoft uh, Windows Start Menu Program Startup. What this is, this is a path for a shortcut to be placed by a program which initiates the startup of that program that has that shortcut. So like, for example, if I have Microsoft Edge in here, it's going to start up Microsoft Edge every time I reboot the computer which could be run as a service, as, as a service running that's in the background process, I should say. So if I reboot the computer, Microsoft Edge will show up here and it's gonna show in here as running. So if you have anything else in here that you find that you don't want to run on startup, this is where you would find it. 
and this is where you would remove it. So by default, program data is invisible. So if you go to C, you can see the program data is not there because it's a hidden folder. You can simply enable, you know, show hidden icons or whatever, or like this hidden items. And you can see the program data showed up there. And then you go to program data and I showed you that, you know, it's Microsoft. Let's see here, Windows, start menu, programs, startup. Okay, now we don't want Microsoft Edge to start up. We're gonna delete it and that's that. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, so number two reason is not enough RAM. So let's go back to our task manager and look to see how much RAM we have. I purposely set this up so you guys can see. If I go to performance tab, this is one way to see how much RAM you have. You can see that I only have four gigabytes of RAM and half of that is being used, which is 54% which is 54%. So let's say you have a program that demands a lot more, or you want to run more than one program, chances are that four gigabytes is not going to be enough. So I'm already using 2.1 gigabytes out of four, and that's used for catching, you know, page file, this and that. And of course you want to allow this because, you know, your computer is going to run more efficiently. Um, with, with not having enough RAM, if I run more applications than this, let's say, you know, video editor, uh, you know, a video game, uh, some kind of virtual machine or whatever else, this is going to be a problem because I'm going to run out of RAM. So what that means is that once you run out of RAM, it's going to switch to using the local disk page file, which is also known as virtual memory. Let's have a look at that to, so I can explain to you properly what that means. If you go to advanced system settings and look at the very first performance tab if we open it up and select advanced again you can see what the page file is set to this paging file size for all drives is 1.4 gigabytes and it's also known as virtual memory as you can see here but it's also it has a really good description here it says a paging file is an area on the hard disk that windows uses as if it were ram keep in mind it switches to using your local disk as RAM. Local disk is a lot slower. I mean, a lot slower than your RAM. And that's the whole point of having RAM is to use it as a temporary storage for the applications that are running in the background because it's a lot faster than your local C drive. So if you run out of RAM, your computer would crash if you didn't have virtual memory set up so it switches over to using the virtual memory that's on the C and it slows down. Okay, let's have a look at the other example. So number three is computer updates. Computer updates is something that can slow down the computer. You can also see that the computer updates are happening in your task manager as well as a process. But one way to make sure uh, you know, or to double check that you do have updates is to sim simply go to check for updates tab and you can see whether if there whether it's something happening here. Right now I am up to date, but if you go to Windows Update, you can see that there is something running here and that could greatly slow down your computer. So the best thing to do is just wait for it to finish and then reboot. Another big problem with Windows Update is that it takes forever to reboot the computer at times and biggest uh, the best solution for that is to upgrade your computer to a faster local drive or i should say if you have a magnetic old drive it's best to upgrade it to solid state drive this is why you see people upgrading to solid state drives because they are a lot faster compared to old magnetic type of drives and this will save you a lot of times especially uh, when it comes to updates or anything else that you do within the computer and inherently will speed up every component of your computer. So I highly suggest to upgrade to solid state drive if you haven't done so already. Again, if you want to look at the examples of my gear that I use, uh, there's a link in the description box. All right, let's move on to the other example. So number four example is virus or malware attack. When you have a virus, it's most likely going to act just like a process running in the background that is 
taking up a lot of CPU power, especially if it's a zombie type of virus, but it basically takes up, it takes over your computer and it uses its resources to do malicious stuff. And that could be presented here in CPU and memory usage. So you can clearly see that. Obviously solution for that is to run your antivirus, you know, make sure that everything is safe and good. But if you do have a virus or bad malware, it will be running back here and it would look very weird. You could kind of recognize it. If you familiarize yourself with the processes that are normally running on your computer, you can see uh, a virus clearly it will be named something weird or something off. For example, it would say system two, for example, to hide itself from a plain site. You know what I mean? But in general, it would be using a lot of CPU usage. Sure, there are viruses that sit in the background and quietly do their stuff, which you may not notice. But if your computer is running slow, chances are that it's if it is caused by the virus that it's using up the CPU or RAM power and uh, or RAM resources, and that would be causing a lot of slowdown issues for your computer. And again, you would just use antivirus to get rid of that, or if you have to. Um, you would reimage the computer, basically reinstall the operating system if you cannot get rid of the virus itself. Okay, moving on to the next one. So number five reason is computer overheating. Why is this happening? Well, this can happen if your computer is dirty. So it might be a physical issue that requires your attention when it comes to cleaning your computer and your CPU is suffering because of that. And I'll tell you why. So let's say you're experiencing slowdowns and then you can't tell why. Chances are that it's caused by a CPU overheating due to the dust collected in your computer or simply, you know, CPU not installed properly. Here's an example of that. Here's the CPU that's on this computer. You can see that it's Intel 6500 CPU and it runs at 3.2 gigahertz. However, you can see that it's set at 3.19 right now. And that's a perfect example to show you that your computer can automatically adjust the speed of your CPU based on the conditions. So yes, this CPU can probably run at higher speeds. Uh, probably, I think the turbo for this one is around four gigahertz and your computer will bring it up to the four gigahertz speeds as well if the conditions are right means that the temperatures are right cpus are super sensitive to temperature at the same time if your computer is overheating it's going to automatically bring down the speed and it's even possible that it would go even lower than the standard speed or a stock speed i should say of your cpu so if your computer is dirty, it's overheating, then it could cause slowdowns because your computer decided to save your CPU instead of letting it burn out. So the faster you go, the more heat you create because more power is required to run it. And if you can't cool it off because your computer might be dirty, then this is something you have to rectify in order to increase the speed or get back to the normal speed of your computer. I hope that's clear enough for you guys. All right, let's move on to the bonus and that's gaming related. So bonus one is related to the gaming. Gaming peoples, my friends, your computer cannot run a game and it runs too slow or this and that. Well, chances are you have just the standard, you know, onboard graphics card which in my case is Intel R HD graphics card 53530, I should say. And this thing, I don't know, maybe can run some games on low, super low quality, maybe. Even then it will be slow. And this is the main reason why your games are running slow. You need to upgrade to a better video card or in some cases in, to any video card because this thing is slow. Okay, I mean they are. I mean they've come a long way, I have to say. Uh, but you know they're a little bit faster. But you know if you want those 60 FPS on your computer, you're gonna want to upgrade a video card. If you have any questions about that, please let me know. 
and I'll have a good suggestion for you when it comes to upgrade of that. Or you can simply check out my gear that is in the description box below. One last thing to mention is that if your computer is just plain old, then chances are it won't be able to keep up with today's technology. You know what I mean? Let's say you have a computer that's like, you know, 10 years old. Of course, it's not going to run fast. It won't be able to keep up with anything from CPU to RAM to whatever else. It's just not going to be fast enough to keep up with the new applications. And the, the only thing you can do is replace the computer. It's not even worth upgrading. If your computer is 10 years old, don't waste your time on it trying to upgrade it. Just buy a new computer, guys. I hope you find this video helpful. Share it with your buddies. Let me know what you think. Or if you have any questions, I'll gladly help you. Leave a like. Oh, God, what else is there to say when it comes to this YouTube stuff? They always say, leave a like, subscribe. So if you guys have time for any of that, I'd appreciate it. But you don't have to. I just appreciate you guys watching. Thank you and have a good day. Bye-bye.